Well, in our country, said Alice, still panting a little, you generally get to somewhere else if you run very fast for a long time, as we've been doing. A slow sort of country, said the queen. Now here you see, it takes all the running you can do to keep in the same place. If you want to get somewhere else, you must run at least twice as fast. Now here you see, it takes all the running you can do to keep in the same place. In 1973, Lee Van Valen, a professor in the biology department at the University of Chicago, proposed the Red Queen Hypothesis of Evolutionary Biology. Essentially, Van Valen argues that throughout its lifespan, any given species is constantly adapting and evolving. Blue jays, grasshoppers, narwhals, and humans we're all increasing our fitness. Unfortunately, an increase in blue jays fitness decreases the fitness of an earthworm, and an increase in earthworm fitness is a decrease in blue jay fitness. Evolutionary biology is like every conversation on Twitter, a zero sum game. Thankfully, Lee Van Balen proposed this idea in the 70s and not now, otherwise it'd be called the bird app hypothesis or science Twitter discourse hypothesis. Hold up, I got more. How do you feel about the should internships be paid hypothesis or the who's better, MJ or LeBron? Find out tomorrow on Undisputed hypothesis. Or my personal favorite, the another filibuster in Congress hypothesis. Anyway, you get the point. But why? The hypothesis is quite elegant and the reference is top tier, but what led Van Valen to even propose this theory? While conducting research on the effects of extinction, Van Valen desired to disprove his own assumption that the probability of extinction for members in a group was independent of age and vulnerability. Now Van Valen is thinking from an evolutionary perspective. When he says group, he's referring to large clades like foraminifera or diatoms, and the timescales we're operating on are geologic in nature. Van Valen assumed that the chances of groups going extinct could not be constant over time, so he ran a simple analysis. He adapts the previously established survivorship curve to better fit his question. A survivorship curve, you may be asking. Well, a survivorship curve is typically used to model the number of individuals that can survive at any given time in the age of a population. The slope of a survivorship curve can be interpreted as the probability of an individual dying. When the slope is small, individuals are unlikely to die. When it's large, they are likely to die. For example, humans are born and most of us survive until we reach our species level life expectancy, upon which we all die relatively suddenly. This is an example of type 1 survivorship. Contrast this to trees. Most seedlings die very young, but those that survive this early life period tend to live for a very long time with low death rates observed. This is an example of type 3 survivorship. If the organisms in a population tend to die at the same rate throughout their lives, this is known as type 2 survivorship. Van Valen adapted this idea to groups. Now the individual has been replaced by the species or the genera, and the groups are millions of years. What Van Valen observed shocked him. The slope of the survivorship curve was relatively constant throughout time. That means the probability of extinction is constant throughout the lifespan of a group. Initially, Van Valen performed analysis on a single group. Maybe it was a fluke. So he performed it again, and again, and again, and again. Dozens of times, and the result continued to appear. Now there were some exceptions to this rule, but that doesn't take away the weight from the fact that the rule generally applies. Now allow me to pontificate for a moment. I'm by no means the first person to say this. In geobiology, paleontology, paleobiology, and other any other field that thinks about the history of life, we tend to focus on periods of exceptionality. Major events, when its extinctions happen, and large groups of organisms suddenly vanish off the face of the earth, or come to the earth. I mean, if we were not for one such, if we're not, if we're not for one such period, would I be here talking to you today, through the internet, or would dinosaurs continue to rule the world with a scaly fist? These major events in early earth history 
are obviously important and captivate the imagination. But maybe it's the background we need to attune our eyes to. Now there are practical issues that make studying the steady state conditions in the history of the biosphere quite difficult, so don't take my words too seriously. I'm just saying, what's the Mona Lisa without the trees or the winding river? But anyway, now Van Valen had something to think about. Why is it the change of a clay going extinct is independent of the age of the clay? I mean, maybe one would think that older clays simply can't adapt to the environment, environmental changes tens to hundreds of millions of years following their inception and tend to die off. Something analogous to the human survival curve. Or maybe you thought that older clades are battle-tested and tend to survive. It is in fact the early years of a species, in the early days of a species, when survivalship is most precarious. But neither tend to be true. What mechanism could be driving evolution that would maintain a constant pressure throughout time? And to maintain that pressure, the mechanism would have to continually evolve because the clade is continually evolving to become more fit. They have to be playing the same game. And there it is. The insight that leads to Van Valen's conclusion. The dominant evolutionary pressure causing extinction is the improving fitness of other organisms. Biological lineages are constantly under siege by other biological lineages who wish to either secure more resources than them, eat them, or parasitize them. And all they can do is keep running, just to stay in place. Evolution is definitely the most hardcore game on Earth. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't like playing games I can't win. Unfortunately, life just so happens to be one of those games. But don't take anything I say too seriously. Remember, it's all a joke.